Hello, today I am talking with you from the beautiful site of Yasha. We're walking back just after ceremony. Before we begin our journey, before we begin our time on the path, on our road to El Mirador, well our road, our jungle trek to El Mirador. So, of course, as you can imagine, I did time it so that we would be making that trek on the day one ech, or beginning of the day one ech, and it's here that I am to talk with you about the Tresena of ech, the new path, the new journey that we're going on. So, it's a great time to find your new road. It's a great time to find your new path. To ask for it to become clear. To ask for Nawal Ech to show you the way if you're looking for it. So keep your mind open, your ears, your eyes, and keep your nose open to smell your way ahead, as it were. Okay, so we're going to begin the Tresena of Ech on the day one Ech, literally the beginning of the path, the new path. Maybe. 20 days ago, on 7 Ech, which was the first day of the five closing days of the year, this was a time to come to the end of something, to come to the end of the road. 7 Ech showed us the end of the road and showed us our choices, where we're going next. 1 Ech, it's time to step out onto that new road. Where are you going? what you're going there with, what resources might you need on your new road, because, you know, that one being like a little seed, sometimes needs a bit of fertilizer in order to make it germinate, in order to make it grow strong. One ech might see you asking for encouragement from people around you to help you to understand your new path, to nourish you on that new path. Sorry, there's a Really rather exquisite pyramid there, I just thought I'd share with you. Okay, so, one air, the new road, where will you go? From one air, we then go into two ach. So two ach. Ach, the Nawal of the house and the home. Ach, the Nawal of the masculine. The Nawal of fathering. The Nawal of the leaders of community. And here we see it with the number two. We see it with choices, decisions. And they might be very, very binary decisions. It might be a yes or a no. An up or a down. And in some cases, a stay or a leave. Because when we think about Ach as being the home... It's kind of interesting that it should be the second day of the Ech Trasena. But you know, this is something that happens when we're going out on our new path. It's like, okay, well, where's our new path taking us? It's taking us away from home. What do we have to do? We have to let go. We have to detach, right? Will we or won't we? Are you ready for your new path? Are you ready to leave home? Are you ready to let go? We can also see that binary nature of it, the kind of black and white nature. Well, Ach also stands up for what is right. And if we see that with regards to the number two, this is asking us or showing us in great clarity our opportunity to stand up for what is right, what brings harmony, what brings peace. From two Ach, we then move into three ish. Well, interestingly enough, there's more home there with the number three. And ish, the, mag the magic of our home, magic that we carry within us. Ish representing the altars, the shrines, the sacred places, the places of magic. And the number three, representing the inner world. Yes, the home but also what's going on within us. And we might ask ourselves, what is going on? Where is our magic? 
What can it do to guide us on our new path? How can the search or the quest within for our connection with the heart of the earth from within, how can that guide us on our new journey? From three ish, we're then going into four zikin. Zikin, the Nawal of vision. And here, seeing it with the number four, grounding it down. The number four, bringing it into the physical plane of existence. The number four, how do we ground the vision? How do we bring it down? How do we manage to bring that into a physical reality? Well, this is something that we certainly need for our path. The vision, I often think about the zikin, the bird flying up high, so it can see far into the future, so it can see far into where we're going. That's the four zikin. It's on flying up high and then bringing it back to the ground and helping us to understand the vision that takes us forwards on our path, on our new path. So it's an exceptionally good Noel of guidance to help to take us forward, to show us the way on our new path. From Forty Keen, sorry, it's a bit hot here, you know, it's kind of like we're proper, proper tropical in the forest and everything, and we're kind of running for the bus to take us on our next journey, of course. But here we are, coming from four Zikin into five Achmach. Now, I suppose I should apologize for the lack of titling on this video. As you can see, I'm kind of making it on the fly. I wanted to give you something. So it's not got the usual editing. I've not managed to stand still for it. Probably the video's wobbling about. I hope it's not too uh, unsettling for you. There's no dates on there. You're going to have to refer to the calendar for March on my site, which you'll find there. And forgive me for all of this. That's five achmach forgiveness. Okay, working on forgiveness. I think I used the phrase working on being a better human being because achmach very much represents the human, and the number five, the work is having to put the effort in and understanding that, you know, kind of like, doesn't just drop in our lap, does it? There's a ball caught, just thought I'd... So, how might we be a better human being? Embracing forgiveness, like working on that side of us, you know, hopefully, that's going to bring out the best of us. Forgiveness, art, sensuality, love, those kind of things. They're all wonderful domains of Achmach. Reminds us just how beautiful and sweet being a human being can be. But with the number five, it's like sometimes it needs a little bit of work. You know, sometimes you've got to initiate on this new path as we... As we tread this new path, we can't take burdens of blame, shame and guilt with us, right? But are they just going to just disappear? No, sometimes we've got to put some effort in. You know, particularly when it might be, you know, we might have to make the first move, forgiveness or pardon. Five Achmach gives us a golden opportunity to do just that. And working on your forgiveness, it's a wonderful thing to do. From Five Achmach... We're then going into six Noach. Now this is the first reappearance of the Year Lord. Came in on twelve Noach, the man. And here we have six Noach. The first twenty days have been complete. The Year Lord has now taken his seat. The man has really taken his seat. It's time to get on with things. Noach, representing knowledge, the mind, problem solving. And the number six, representing stability. What a wonderful day to get an inspired idea for stability, right? What a wonderful day to understand how to put our knowledge together, to draw upon the inspiration from the other realms so that we can, you know, create our solutions. So it's a great day to be doing that, to be asking for those solutions to come 
through inspiration from the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth. And of course, it's about grounding them into the practical. That's where the six is manifesting them into the physical plane. From six noch, we then go into seven tihash. So tihash, one of the nawalas of healing, and here with the number six, this, with the number seven, sorry, representing finality, representing finishing things up, ending the healing process. That's what 70 hash is here to do. So final cut is one of the words or one of the phrases that I would use with 70 hash. It's making that final incision that finally brings healing. Now it also brings choices because we see that seven standing on top of the pyramid, standing on top of the mountain, waiting for we're trying to make our choices, right? Trying to understand our choices. That's what we gotta do. So, 70 hash, a great day for cutting away the last remnants of whatever needs to be cut away for the finalization of the healing. From 70 hash, we then move into 8 Kawok. Day of celebration of the midwives. The day of celebration of female healers. The day of celebration of the rain. It's a great day to make ceremony. To give thanks for the healing women in our lives. It's a great day to make ceremony. To give thanks for the rain and the rains to come. Eight Kawok. It's a great day for bringing the new into the world, for asking for the safe delivery of children, support in the work of the midwives. From Eight Kawok, we then move into the rather wonderful Nine Achpu. Achpu representing the divine. Achpu representing the, sorry, a bit of a hill here. Achpu representing our connection with the divine looking for the divinity in the world around us. And what do we see it with? The number nine. The number nine which can represent the feminine. The number nine which can represent life itself. This is about seeing the divinity in life. This is about seeing the beauty in the everyday. This is about seeing how amazing sometimes your everyday world might be how you can connect with the divine through the women of the world, how we can do, connect with the divine through life. Because it's no good if it's just a concept up there and out there. It's about bringing it all to life, making it happen in the now, making it happen here. For me, Nain Achpu is a great day to embrace the divinity of life. From Nine Achpu, we're then going into Ten Imosh. Imosh, the Nawal of the waters, the Nawal of the oceans and the lakes. Imosh, <laughs> the representation of our collective consciousness. Imosh is what draws us all together. It's the dream world that we move into. And as you see it there with the number 10, representing community, representing cooperation, representing coming together. So for Tenimosh, we can certainly see this is a day to dream together with our community, to develop the dreams of our community, to bring them out. From Ten Imosh, we then move into Eleven Ich. Eleven Ich, well, both Eleven and Ich being fairly unpredictable. I mean, it might be quite a powerful and unpredictable day. We're not entirely sure which direction it's going, we're certainly not sure which direction the wind is blowing. It's a day of strong words, a day of strong communication. So it's a day to be mindful of your words. You know, I think I've used the phrase measure twice and cut once before. Or perhaps it might be think twice and speak once on 11 Eek. It's a day that we have to be careful not to allow our mouths to run away with us after all. We might end up saying the words that we regret later on, so be mindful of your words on 11 Eek. From 11 Eek, we then go into 12 Akabal, 
wrapping it all up. The number 12 representing all of our life's experience and Akhbal representing the new dawn, the twilight coming in, bringing the new day, bringing the strength and possibilities of the new day. So it might be a good day to revisit past life experiences to understand what you can turn into new concepts. On your path as you move forwards, what old concepts you have like laying on your workbench, ready to be reworked and turned into something new. 12 Akabal may well bring that out. And then finally, we finish the Tracena on 13 Cat. Very special day. A day to understand what we want to carry forwards and what we want to leave behind. As we, as we walk out on our new path, what do we want to gain? And what do we want to leave? As we see it like that, we could ask for the help from spirit or the ancestors to help us choose, help us declutter and free us from our attachments so we can walk our new path in liberty. So thank you for listening today. I hope that you enjoy your journey and I look forward to seeing you in 13 days time. Thank you.